Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Body Life Apothecary, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. We need to talk about the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which is absolutely major, totally symbolic. If you know anything about the planets, they impact us here down on Earth. Their energy radiates vibrations that impact us here down on Earth. And it's in our best interest to understand the energy that we're working with, to better understand obstacles, opportunities, and the things that are going on around us and also within us. It impacts every area of our lives on an intimate, from the most intimate areas and the most intimate aspects to the largest, meaning our government, our politics, and the world around us. If we understand the energy of these planets, we'll never fall victim to them, we'll never sit there scratching our heads, and we'll know the right time to move, the right time to rest, the right time to strike, and we'll never find ourselves being overly challenged and um, succumbing, I guess, to what is happening around us, if that makes any sense. Now, this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is so powerful, it's so meaningful, it's so significant. In fact, when I look at the charts and when I look at the symbolism of this, it's found that this conjunction, the conjunction of two powerful planets, always shows up and reveals itself at times when major moments and, or major energies or major like, like um, things that we are to master or things that are there to guide us, to help us master ourselves or to master others, meaning that we show up as leaders or we show up... Um, in ways of tremendous growth, we see conjunctions with the planets. That's when something is being ushered in. A conjunction is two energies coming together, regardless of what they represent, regardless of how they vibe, what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with. Those two energies of those planets merge in a way that is powerful and is life-changing. So one of the last times that we see this at this time, because this conjunction is happening on December 21st, which just so happens and it's not, there's no such thing as coincidence, it's divine timing, just so happens to fall on the winter solstice. One of the last times we saw a conjunction like this, people are able to connect that to the birth of Christ, to a birth of an ascended master who came through as a leader, as a, a person who was thinking differently, doing differently, and it inspired the, the movement of the generations to follow after that. It inspired religion, it f inspired philosophy, it, uh, it inspired spirituality, different levels of thinking. And that's exactly what is that we're seeing with this type of conjunction. I would not be, it, it's in, in the Bible and in sacred texts, it's not known exactly what those, what the planets, the conjunction within, within those planets when Jesus Christ was born and that ushering of that new time, when that happened, it's not confirmed. There are a lot of theories, but it's planets like this, when we have Saturn and Jupiter, that are conjoining in the sign of Aquarius, that is so powerful. Let me break it down for you. So Saturn is the planet of restriction. It's the, sat it's the planet of rules, regulations, business, politics, and our foundation. But also it's about our identity, our legacy, and what it is that we are going to like the lasting impression that is that we are going to leave on earth that we build towards and we are committed to in our day-to-day -day lives. Every small thing, every small detail, it, it, we want to develop it, we want to strengthen it, we want to commit to it, we want to foster its growth in a way that is healthy and vibrant and strong. Meanwhile, Jupiter is a planet of expansion, growth, but it's also the planet of philosophy, it's also the planet of spirituality, it's the planet of higher, higher awakening, higher awareness. The way to do that, and the gifts that Jupiter gives to us is the ability to have the freedom and the, the curiosity to explore outside perspectives, other perspectives, and it encourages us to keep our minds open. When we have these two planets falling, well, coming together, but falling in the sign of Aquarius and ushering in this new birth, this new cycle at the time of the winter solstice. Now, let's talk about Aquarius. Aquarius's energy is all about future. It's all about not in the present moment, it's about thinking light years ahead, it's about advancements, it's about doing what's right, not for yourself in a way that's selfish, but in a way that benefits all of humanity to the point where sometimes it can be um, self-sacrificial. It's about inspiration, it's about divine inter intervention and inspiration, it's about 
um, the universe, being connected, so connected to the universe that when these messages, they come through like a lightning bolt in our hearts, in our minds, in our energy, and it's just the vibration of the entirety of the planet. People who, an energy who falls under the influence of Aquarius, they are pulled to a higher purpose to the point where they can almost feel detached from the rest of humanity or misunderstood by the rest of the humanity because they don't fit in with the rest of humanity. They are the ones, and this energy is called to totally shift the way humanity is moving, feeling, thinking, doing, being, right? So it can be very disruptive. It can be very life-changing. It can be very erratic. It can be very unpredictable. It's in our best interest, every single one of us, to stay very open to this growth, to stay very open to this wisdom. And what I'm seeing at this time with this conjunction, and I'll talk about the symbolism of the winter solstice because that's another topic, but the timing of this is so monumental. And after everything that we have gone through up until 2020, I mean, it, it could not be anything other than a major shift that is happening in our lives, not only on a global level, and I'll talk about what it is I see on a global level, of course, but also on an intimate level within your personal lives, and we'll talk about that as well. But as Saturn and Jupiter are coming together, one of the things in the sign of Aquarius, one of the things that stands out to me intuitively is I'm seeing the wisdom of the elders. I'm seeing the wisdom of those who have come before us, and I'm also seeing the wisdom from those from the future. Some of you guys, that's gonna, that's gonna blow your mind because you're thinking, well, how can I? How can we as humanity connect to the energy of the future, to the people of the future, to what is ahead of us? And that's the thing about energy, that's the thing about vibration, that's the thing about time is that it doesn't, it really doesn't fall into these uh, constraints that, is that we've created, that humans have created. So we have the ability to tap into other life forms. Uh, one thing that's really standing out to me is the Palladians. And the Palladians are alien life forms, and that some of you guys are probably like, wow, Jess is really going off, but literally hear me out before you reject it. But it's these other out, out world, out, outer worldly alien life or higher intelligent life that give us guidance from the future that moves past our restrictions, our restraints in the present. That means that we are able to access higher levels of intelligence, higher levels of wisdom, higher levels of divine guidance through other life forms and also through our higher self, through the divine and through the universe. The time that is that we're doing that and the time that it is going to be most powerful, mark my words, is the 21st of December. This is when we're seeing the, the wisdom of the elders, those who have lived before us, so our ancestors, our guides, and like, our, how we have done things as, as a society, how we have done things as a planet, as humanity, benefiting and learning from the, the, the advancements from the future that are inspired and joining forces with us at this time. It is so important and so imperative. Now I'm going to talk about the winter solstice a little bit here. It is so important and imperative that we take this timing. Timing is everything. That's the one thing that is that we can't fight, that's the one thing that we can't force, is timing. We have to stay in the present moment, but what we learn, spiritual teachers and astrologers, is we learn to watch and to map what's happening happening within the stars, what's happening in the zodiac, what's happening in the planets, in order to understand these cycles and to know when it's a good time to move, what we should be doing, what our direction is, what our purpose is, and the universe, God, the divine, the highest power, the highest self, knows when um, gives us the tools to give to us so that we can make uh, decisions and have a compass, so to speak, to help us along our path while we're here on Earth. So it's the timing of this, this, this solar eclipse. Um, the solar eclipse is helping to usher it in, but it's this Saturn and uh, Jupiter conjunction happening inside of Aquarius at the time of the winter solstice that is a moment for each and every single one of us to go into our own darkened state, to go into our own darkened place. This doesn't mean that we sit in the shadow self and we um, revel in pain and suffering of the past, present, or the future. It's a moment to go silent. It's a moment to detach. It's a moment to reattach ourselves to the universe, to the cycles, and to allow ourselves to be observant, to allow ourselves to see whatever it is that spirit, our guides, 
the future, whoever it is that wherever it is that we're pulling this higher intelligence from, this higher information from, everyone's different. Be, one thing with my channel is that I give very specific messages to a very general audience, to a very open audience, because I'm not pulling your specific chart at this time, at this moment. I'm pulling the chart for the moment. I'm pulling the chart for humanity. And I have to give a very specific message to a very wide audience. So everyone's going to be different as far as who, what, where they're going to be pulling their information from in order to help them at this point and to usher them into this next wave, into this next cycle. But what I can tell you is that there is this element of reevaluation, reassessment, and acknowledging the present, the past where we have gone, and then projecting accepting but projecting our vision of what we see for ourselves and what is given to us into our future so that we can co-create it so that we can manifest it in order to do this we have to go silent we have to go dark so many of us in our society and in our humanity we think that we always have to be actively do 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 doing the winter solstice the winter solstice's power is not in our ability to actively do it's in our ability to be passive, to be receptive, to receive, to be quiet, to be dormant, and to allow our energy to be restorative, for there to be renewal. And at that moment, that's when something new will be born. Mark my words. It's when the whole world is quiet that these two major massive planets come and merge together in order to usher in massive change. What you want to do is be open and receptive to that. Lights out, darks, dark out. Keep it dark, keep it quiet, go into your meditative state, wrap yourself up in blankets, keep yourself warm, light a candle, don't fall asleep. If you do fall asleep, make sure that the candle is in a safe space. But this is a time where you really want to be open and receptive to the guidance, the clarity, the counsel of your ancestors, your guides, or whatever it is that you're calling these higher levels of wisdom from. Um, there is going to be a massive shift that, from what it is that I can see when it comes to leadership, when it comes to spiritual leaders when it comes to spiritual counselors i am almost getting a sense that spiritual leaders like religious leaders are no longer going to be calling themselves the leaders of the church or the leaders of these organizations these establishments they're almost going to be considered counselors why because there's a tremendous shift when it comes to realizing and acknowledging what and who their power comes from and the respect in how they deliver that to the people, how they deliver that to, to humanity. People before this time, the, the, these leaderships, the, the, the leadership the polit in politics, business, religion, etc., education, have put themselves in a hyper-focus saying that I am the one, I am the all-powerful one. There's going to be a shift in people really giving credit where credit is due, and credit always goes back to the divine, divine intervention. So these people, these leaders, are going to be more about humanity and more about serving and less about serving themselves. Thank God, right? So what we will see, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be massive. It's gonna be great, all throughout different humanities, all throughout you know, different societies all throughout the world. So there is a moment where there is a trigger that can happen where there might, there could be eruptions, there could be political eruptions, there could be business eruptions, there could be eruptions in your personal life, in your health. It de definitely depends on your, on your chart. I'll look, I'll talk to you guys about the personal intimate aspects of this later on in the video. Hopefully I'll have time stamps up for you guys, but if not, can someone else do it for me? Shout out to you if you do. But, um, yeah, there is. there could be major eruptions as power play starts to happen. This power play is something that I have been talking about for over three years on my YouTube channel accurately. My timing has been pretty precise within six months time, but for the most part I get things pretty tight within like a month or two or even within days. Um, some things that can be confirmed right away and some things months later or a year later would be confirmed that this is the time, this is the moment that it had happened. So, you know, Virgo mentality, sometimes I don't speak on it as much as I should, but it is what it is. Like, we all have our battles. Um, I'm learning how not to be so humble, I guess. But mark my words, there will be a tremendous shift when it comes to power. And that can erupt in ways that can feel destructive um, and can feel scary to some societies. These are people and places within the world that have been dealing with disruption and pain and suffering for generations, very, very long, longer than 30 years, longer than 50 years. 
this um, shift in power has been happening and has been more high, high, heightened within the last three to five years. That's a very large gap, but the way that energy works is that there is a buildup that is tremendously felt by psychics, intuitives, and empaths, and we start talking about it, we start speaking about it, and then we start seeing it externally. So even though I'm saying three to five years, that energy buildup has started five years ago from now, we start to see the, the actual ripple effect of it three years and then it starts to be concentrated and then year 2020 it starts to actively volcanically erupt so these are things that it's not i want you guys to get out of your boxes this is not just in your community although it definitely impacts your community it's other places around the world watch to see what's happening on the other side five years ago i was saying what happens over there impacts us over here what happens over here impacts us over there the world is going to get into a very small place very very soon we're going to see just how connected we all are we're going to see how energy over there impacts us over here so keep your eyes on disruption. Their pain and their suffering is ultimately your pain and your suffering. There is going to be new leaders and new leadership that is coming in and ushered in that you know will really shake up the shake the boat, so to speak, because they will be starting to focus on the impact of all of us collectively. This is Saturn and Jupiter conjunction in the sign of Aquarius. All of us collectively, leadership. Um, structure, foundation, stability, Saturn with expansion, knowledge, philosophy, and a, a different level of thinking, a different level of approach to politics, government, exploration, education, spirituality, in the sign of Aquarius, so all of humanity. So it really starts, we're going to see a struggle for people, politics, people, businesses and stuff like that coming together in ways and building new principles, new rules, new regulations, new ways of doing things, new philosophy, new mantras, right? So if it's literally out with the old, in with the new, but it can come with an eruption. It can come with a massive shift. It can be met with resistance always. Anytime when there's change and people are so stuck and rigid in their way, especially when we're looking at Saturn, this planet, it shows the good. It shows the things that well, there is no such thing as good or bad, but it shows the ways that the energy feels positive and constructive, and it also shows the way that it can reveal its, itself in ways that is destructive, things that can be very difficult and challenging. And Saturn really can be, can rule dogmatic, and Jupiter as well can be, can rule dogmatic thinking. Being so stuck in your ways that you don't want to hear other perspectives, you don't want to hear what the others are doing. If that is you, whether you're a government, a po like a political person, a, a spiritual leader, or whatever, when I tell you, or in your own personal life, you will be swallowed up by this. The earth will crack open and you will fall into it. I said that a long time ago, like five years ago, when I was starting getting my visions and my prophecies that this is the new world that we were entering in. I knew that there was going to be a loss of life. I knew that there was going to be people getting swallowed whole. But the way to avoid that is to stay open, to stay flexible, to continue to pull the energy back within yourself and move from a space of love, to ask advice from your higher self only, and to take what other people are saying, these gurus that you're listening to, these counselors, these wise, these wise leaders, and let their words, their messages be something that only affirms and confirms the things that you know within our truth within yourself. That includes me, that includes other star seeds, that includes other ascended masters and people that is that are coming through. That even includes listening to your ancestors because their wisdom is strong. Their history and their stories are relevant. But at the same time, it it can it can only serve so much and it serves its place in its own time, if that makes any sense. So you have to keep checking in with yourself. You have to keep checking in with the higher the higher source, whether you believe in God or the universe or whatever. It, it's up to you. So the summer, the winter solstice, I'm sorry, is very, very powerful. It's a, it's a time of ushering in powerful, powerful change. Again, I have to bring it back to, the, to one of the mo most popular ascended masters, which was Jesus Christ. When he was born, he was he came through under the energy of a summer solstice. I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep saying summer solstice. He came through under the energy of the winter solstice and under the conjunction of two major planets. And it's very similar to leadership and philosophy, which is what we're seeing here. So do not be surprised if a guru comes through or spirituality shifts or spirituality within yourself shifts or revelation shifts or your purpose shifts or your direction shifts. 
because that's the energy that is that we're working with right now. All right, so let me talk to my babies about their intimate life. Let me talk to you guys about the intimate details that can be found within your life. The biggest thing that's standing out to me when it comes to this winter solstice and this uh, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is the word revelation. Be open to new revelations. Be open to being inspired into so deeply and so powerfully shifted and inspired into your next path. There are so many of us that have been called into higher pressure situations and circumstances that literally have set us up to be molded and felt, feel the pressure so deeply, so immensely in loss, in healing, in like awareness, like things that open up, rip our eyes open in order to prepare us for a moment like this that's going to swing the doors open within yourself. The biggest and most impactful difference that you will feel is going to be internal. You're going to feel it internally first and no one can tell you otherwise. It is given to you by God, a revelation, a truth that says, Jessica, Rebecca, Lindsay, Hillary, Lunt, uh, Lauren, this is where you are going. This is what your life is to be. This is what they expected from you, but I am the one. I am the truth. I am everything. And listen to my words, heed my words, heed my wisdom. I will give to you all of the information that you need to hear in order for you make in order for you to make impactful and meaningful change in your life and the lives of others. Humanity needs you. Your purpose is here, your purpose is present. Heed my words, listen to my words. The path up until this point has only been so difficult, so tumultuous, so uprooting because we needed you to be melted and molded under the pressure of your circumstances to prepare you for what you're about to come. If it wasn't for this shaping and this shifting, you would have cracked under pressure. And it was the, the pressure that we put on you that helped you to shift into opening your heart, opening your mind. You may have felt desperate, you may have felt lost, you may have felt abandoned, you may feel lost so tremendous, meaning that there are things and people and circumstances and places and aspects within yourself that you have laid to rest, that you have been forced to say goodbye to. And like a phoenix, you, you rest, you rest, you lie dormant, and there is a new birth, a new awakening, and you step forth in your truth. Now, how this will impact, some of you guys are actually going to come through as spiritual gurus, mark my words. It will be the person that is that you least expect. It will be the person who is the most eccentric. It'll be the person who never quite fit in with society or always felt uncomfortable in the society and the place, no matter how public they were, no matter how widely perceived they were, no matter how many people knew their name, their face, whatever, it will come in the most interesting ways. It always comes in the most, un, un, like it almost gets unpacked by the most unexpected package. So it's the person that you would never think it to be. So stay open and listen to your intuition, listen to your guidance. One of the biggest warnings that I've been saying for all of, longer than that, uh, 2018, 2017 is watch, watch how spiritual leaders are trying so hard to convince you of their wisdom. Watch that and be very, you have to keep checking in with yourself to, to make sure that you are not following false prophets, that you're not following false people, that you're not following false things. Because the same people that you think you can trust and spiritual gurus, if they are calling you to listen to them and to rely on them, that is the biggest red flag, you guys. If you watch for the people, the spiritual providers and the spiritual practitioners that are saying to you, go to your highest wisdom and your, your counsel and your guidance is going to come from within you. You are the guru that you've needed. You are the teacher that you've needed. There are going to be tools and resources and people that will pass, that you will pass along your journey as a guru, as your own spiritual teacher that can help you and that can give you additional information to help you along that way, but you are the wise elder in your world, right? So you have to keep, you have to prioritize or I'm going to, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm going to encourage you 
to prioritize your spiritual practice. I'm going to encourage you to take it seriously. I'm going to encourage you to invest in it. I'm going to encourage you to a lot time and to do your best every day to show up in that space because we need it now more than ever. And it's not solely about you, it's also about humanity and the gifts it is that you're going to leave, the legacy, because this is purpose. At the time of the 20, on the 21st, people are going to be stepping into powerful, powerful truths within, within themselves, things that are unavoidable and obnoxious in their truth. I mean, you can try to avoid it if you want, but why would you want to? So when it comes to your intimate life, you guys, you know, that's one thing that I'm seeing, but I'm also seeing if you are business owners or the work that is that you do, the legacy that is that you're, do, that you're doing, it's going to change. By all means, it's going to change. This is not something that you need to have fear of. In fact, if you were prioritizing your meditation practice, your spiritual practice, your rites and your routines, you would know that there is a change that's going to happen, that's going to occur, that even as everything is breaking away from you, that you have nothing to fear because you feel it so deeply within your spirit that you don't even have fear. Maybe the old you would have been af would have had fear, would have been fearful, but the new you, the you now, the awakened you, the enlightened you, the Buddha within you, understands that you are in the right place at the right time you're in good hands and everything is moving in with divine timing and that every tool every resource that you need can be found within you or called towards you you have everything so let my words also be things that only affirm what you already know what you've already heard what you've already felt let it be so right so i'm also seeing you guys some of you guys within this darkened moment on the 21st you know, this night, this winter solstice, while you're in this darkened space, you're going to learn how to take better care of yourself. Some of you guys have actively been neglecting yourself and spirit gives you permission to be imperfect and to do your best. And sometimes your best meant, it didn't look like your best, it looked like your worst. It looked like you were taking shortcuts, drinking, eating unhealthy, engaging in relationships that maybe you know, you shouldn't have, it is what it is, buying things, being wasteful, being gluttonous, being selfish, being stagnant, not being open to receiving, the list goes on and on. But all of those things, again, were part of your process. They are part of the pressure. They are part of your journey. And when you sit within this state of being and you receive this revelation at this night, at this time, you are going to know deep within you and you are going to see so open your eyes to see and open your eyes to accept and to acknowledge and to have awareness. Some things that you will have to say goodbye to because a new you is being born. In fact, as you have this revelation, the old things that you are letting go of will be so repulsive to you, will be so energetically an unmatch to you that you wouldn't even accept it or allow it. It's going to be a totally different person. You are literally birth, birthing in the higher self. You are literally birthing in this new cycle. You are literally birthing in this, this next stage within your journey, your purpose. It's so deep. So I'm seeing health, aspects of the health emotionally. There are going to be cer certain things that you are no longer going to accept because they have made you feel a certain way you will realize that there have been things that have taken your power away from you, whether it be substances, beliefs, philosophies, career, movement that is that you're doing, things that have been a part of your reality that you are going to recognize and be shaken from them to the point where you stand up, you walk away, and you don't even need anything more from it. It served its purpose, there was a time and a place for it, but no longer. This is going to be emotionally freeing. This is going to be emotionally releasing. Give yourself forgiveness as you sit in awe, as you're watching like snapshots of yourself accepting certain things that you will no longer accept. Give yourself forgiveness, compassion, kindness as you watch these snapshots and you say, holy crap, I can't believe I allowed that. So your goal in that moment is to lay it to rest. Your goal in that moment is to release it and to surrender it and, and thank it for the journey, thank it for the lesson, but to move past and to move on. That is where your power is going to come from and you are gonna be so repulsed from what it is that you just released that you won't even entertain the idea of that energy anymore. 
The other thing that's standing through to me is philosophy. Keep the mind open. Mentally, the mind, the perspective, the ideas, the revelations are going to shift. They're going to change. It's going to be aha, aha, aha moment, right? One right after the other. So you want to make sure that you're writing it down, that you're documenting it on pen and paper, and that you're keeping those, those, that, those entries as sacred. They are sacred texts. Remember how I said in the very beginning how there were leaders, spiritual leaders for generations that took all of the credit for themselves when in reality, they were supposed to be the protector of sacred texts. So the same thing is gonna happen for you. You're going to realize that you are your own guru and the things that is that you write down, the intentions that you set, your journal entries, your documentary, like the things that is that you're documenting are sacred. They are holy. They are things that should be precious and are special. And they are valuable and they are wise and wisdom and they add on to the wisdom when you the wisdom that you'll be sharing part of your legacy when you become an ancestor. So see it for what it is and document it accordingly. Keep your mind open and document. Write things down. Me, myself, I had already received my revelation before this happened. Why? Because my routine, my spiritual ritual, my spiritual practice is ingrained in me to prioritize it. So I had already known, and I'm definitely open to receiving more, you know, wisdom and more downloads, of course. But I already know that after this, after this winter solstice, after this eclipse, after this conjunction in the sign of Aquarius, so this Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in the sign of Aquarius, I know that now it is time for me to step forward and share my wisdom in written form, in written text that I will share with others so that they it will benefit them along their journey. So if I've already committed myself and to spirit and to my, my purpose and to my future self, that I'm gonna to begin to write. I'm gonna start documenting and, and writing um, and organizing my knowledge, my experiences when it comes to astrology, when it comes to spiritual growth, and when it comes to divine timing, cycles, and tarot, and esoteric symbolism in two or three books. I haven't figured it out yet. It's not for me to figure out, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But this is my contribution. This is one of my contributions is sharing that knowledge in that way. So that's what you can expect from me as I shift priorities as we move into 2021. But it's the, the eclipse that's going to help me to give additional revelations in as far as when, how, what that is going to look like. And I'm open to receiving that. What are you doing? What is your legacy? What is your purpose? What is that going to look like? right? We are going to be vessels. We are vessels. So how is this energy going to be expressing itself? Um, the other thing is that some of you guys are not done with the breakdown. There are people who have already have started it years ago, and there are some that are just now catching up. So I don't want to neglect those people. Um, if you have been going through the ringer emotionally, spiritually, mentally, breaking and the focus for you has been generational curses, breaking free from toxic relationships and toxic connections and addictions. Um, this will not apply to you in the same heavy weight that it has because there are going to be new babies, newbies, who are getting ushered into it at this time. So your spiritual journey, your path, your tumultuous path, we all did it. We we're all under the heat, under the fire. Don't be ashamed that it's taken you this time. Everyone's timing is different. And your journey and if you know it, you know. If Because then as, as I'm saying this to you, it will resonate. And if you know that it doesn't apply to you, that will too resonate. But there are some who are following behind. And they're following in the footsteps, not mirroring them, but their timing is a little different. There, there's different cycles and there's different ages and there's different energies that are going to be more prone, more open, more ready. And their timing is now. So they get the heat. They get molded, they, they feel the pressure. And then there's those who are just kind of lackadaisical, kind of floating through, but it cut, catches up to them eventually. You're not being punished. <laughs> Look to the rest of us who have been there, done that, who've started it maybe from child, I started my journey from childhood. Look to us and ask us for advice, ask us for counsel, ask us for, ask us your questions. We will do our best to be elder-like to you in order to help you, in order to encourage you, but we will not do the work for you. 
we will not give you all of the answers. We will help guide you by the questions that is that we ask you, by the questions that, is, that, is, that you're asking us, but we are not gonna answer those questions for you because we also need you to find your own answers, to find your own truth, to find your own revelations. Be open to that. I'm saying a whole lot. So as I'm looking at the chart right now, I have Neptune squaring off with the North Node in the sign of Gemini. North Node is falling in the sign of Gemini. Neptune is sitting in the sign of Pisces. Again, this is about spiritual information, dissecting and disseminating and decoding, deciphering and organizing these information messages, tidbits, facts, evidence that is coming and pouring into you and it can only happen if you go into that darkened space the winter solstice and the the conjunction is about the immense amount of pressure that comes through that pushes us back and if you are wise you will lay down first and cover yourself in the soil of this earth cover yourself in the warmth of this earth and allow yourself comfortably to receive these downloads because they are going to guide not only your path and your purpose for the rest of your life to come, but for the rest of humanity. It is that serious. I hope that this message resonates. I hope that it makes sense. This is what you can expect for the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in the sign of Aquarius. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments or you can find me at bahadilife.com or email me at info at Until then, make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.